Hi, welcome back to Space Thoughts. Last week when I, I did a video, a video, I talked about I might I was thinking about doing some uh, discussion, some of my thoughts on the Chinese balloon overflight matter that happened earlier this month. Um, and as just watching things, you know, I've, I've looked at that and that's there's really a lot of political issues involved in that. And I probably won't, I'm not going to address that really here in this video, but an issue that has come up and that really it's kind of bothers me <clears throat> to be nice about it is there is a narrative being formed right now about you know this about you know whether or not the area that the balloon was traversing is a quote legal gray, gray zone or what they what is what is being termed as near space and this popped up in a, in, in a couple instances i've seen a couple articles about it and one very prominent Space, aerospace lawyer <laughs> has, you know, discussed this in an interview that, you know, this there is this ambiguous area that this balloon may have may have traveled through. So that brought into question and, and kind of questioning, in a sense, implicitly questioning whether or not the U.S. or any nation can extend sovereignty. So what I'm going to be talking about this, I'm going to be talking about this here in this one and why I think it's rubbish to begin with, or as, as a respected colleague put in one of his posts, bull feathers, um, he was being nice about it, nicer than I would be about it. But uh, I'm going to try and we're going to talk about this concept of near space and why I think it's really, you know, more of a lawfare narrative, a, law, a lawfare creation or political creation to try and create ambiguity where there really isn't. And so, and again, this is a space channel. <laughs> we talk about space matters, but really, when we talk about space, sometimes we got to talk about areas like uh, where uh, below space, where where space doesn't extend. And this, and I think this is very relevant to this video. So let's go here and get this up. So just uh, to 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 basically form this or basically shape this discussion regulated the the airspace that the federal aviation administration regulates is go extends up to 60,000 feet approximately or 11.36 miles this is where the FAA basically has its jurisdiction to control the airspace above the United States and obviously this is that that makes it very very sovereign uh Sovereign, sovereign air, U.S. airspace, out to twelve nautical miles uh, off the coast of north of the United States. So that's a given. That's pretty solid. Anything at sixty thousand feet below is is sovereign airspace, and anything anything any foreign object entering entering in there without authorization is basically violates airspace. And this this Chinese balloon that came through was essentially at sixty thousand feet, maybe a little bit above, which is where some where some of these ambiguities are, in my my opinion, being fabricated. Um, the unofficial spatial demarcation of outer space is three hundred sixteen thousand eight hundred feet, or approximately sixty miles. And again, the U.S. doesn't. The U.S. basically has taken the position there is no need to have this art created an artificial demarcation where the atmosphere in and outer space begins, but we see this a lot. We see some some states, some nations actually include actually put this into their domestic space laws as a as a <clears throat> official demarcation, but it's not really you know again the U.S. doesn't recognize it. And there's a lot of reasons, and this all goes back to the Eisenhower administration. They didn't want to get involved with it. They didn't want to. They didn't want to make this you know a legally binding. Uh, precept of international law. And there were a lot of reasons because technology was developing and you want to basically be able to extend your sovereignty to certain levels. Again, for missile defense and, and, and things like that, you want to be able to intercept an incoming RV. If it, and if it's inside, if it's inside a area that you, you're going to claim as a sovereign airspace, you'll basically have a legal right to do it, <laughs> including um, the idea of, uh, of self-defense under Article 51 of the UN Charter, but we're not going to get into that too much. So just understand, the, the, that, that is where the unofficial demarcation is. So we have 60,000 feet, which is recognized regulated airspace by the FAA, in this case, for the U.S., and then you have the unofficial spatial demarcation of outer space, which is 316,800 feet, 60 miles. But you have all the space in between, and the question is, the question being created, in my opinion, or the ambiguity being created is, well, is this this is a gray area? Is this a gray area? What do we call it? Well, 
The term that's been really coming up lately is called near space. And basically, you're talking about 256,800 feet or 48.64 miles between that 60,000 mile uh, at uh, 60,000 feet altitude and the 360,800 th 360, feet unofficial demarcation for outer space. So you got over 48 point, you know, have almost 49 miles of airspace, atmospheric space above somebody's territory that basically is quoted, that is being asserted as a gray zone. And this, frankly, it annoys me. I'm just going to be blunt about it. It annoys me because this whole idea of, well, you know, so basically you're saying if that balloon was traveling over, say, 60,000 uh, 60,001 feet or, you know, above, it was technically within this gray zone and the U.S. wasn't, but the U.S. didn't have the authority to actually uh, intercept it like it did, you know, no matter how late in the game it was. And again, that's something I won't delve into too much because it's another pet peeve of mine. Um, and that gets very, that's more into political. But the, the, the so basically what, what what is being created, in my opinion, is an ambiguity for this whole thing with you know, near space. In other words, oh, what, it's a legal gray zone. You know, you're not really sure if a nation can extend its sovereignty all the way up there. And you know, as as my colleague said, and I will, I will, I won't mention his name, but uh, I will discredit his term bull feathers. I mean, it just doesn't. It, it it's ridiculous to to be the least. It's garbage. So why is it ridiculous? Well, there's been a lot of precedent set in international law through actual incidents in this area of near space that basically says that this whole idea of, you know, a, this so quote, almost sovereign, sovereignless region, like in between uh, these, these two, between F this regulated airspace, 60,000 feet and the unofficial spatial demarcation of outer space, just, it, it, it just doesn't make sense. And I think it's more political and more narrative driven, driven than actually legally have, have any legal reality. So, why do I say that? Well, look at the, we're going to look at a couple of aircraft. These are all U.S. aircraft and some incidents. And, uh, and I'll just talk about these briefly again because we don't want to go too long with this video. But um, the U-2 spy plane developed back in the 50s. Um, it, did a, it was basically initially operated by the Central Intelligence Agency to over and literally it overflew the Soviet Union. Now, the operating altitude was approximately 70,000 plus feet. Again, well within that zone of near space, um, definitely above the 60,000 60, foot um, mark that, that is regulated by the FAA or, or would be considered regulated airspace. Again, <clears throat> but this was over the Soviet Union and they took a lot of shots at it when, when, it, was, when it was literally overflying and violating it when it was overflying their territory. So they basically decided that, okay, this is, um, got to stop this here. Go back here. But basically this is the idea that, you know, this whole idea that, you know, there is a gray zone in this area is ridiculous. And it was proven when uh, Francis Gary Powers U2 was shot down. Um, and there was a big firestorm, a political firestorm afterwards about it, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. Frankly, they were pissed off. The Soviets were pissed off about it, and they had the proof. They had the proof that the U.S. was violating their sovereign airspace. Um, another example is the Taiwanese. The Taiwanese Air Force, the, the Black Cat Squadron, actually had a had were trained in the U.S. on the U-2, and they had twelve aircraft um, to work with, and they actually overflew mainland China. And during during the period when they were overflying mainland China with the with the U-2. They lost, I think it was either five or six aircraft. And again, they were flying at these quote near space altitudes. And they were doing when, when they were doing so, uh they basically, you know, the Chinese basically said, you know, this is our territory, and they, they shot them down. So obviously, you know, setting some precedent here for this the, this altitude near space that really it is sovereign airspace. The A-12 Oxcart program, which is a successor to the uh to the U-2. And again, this was a CIA program, and this is the predecessor to the next aircraft we'll see. But this one flew at 90,000 plus feet. Now, unofficially, whether it flew over any but any other anyone's sovereign airspace is questionable, but you know, there were but shots were taken at it. Radar locks were made. Um, there were flights over North Vietnam with this aircraft during during the Vietnam uh during the Vietnam War. And uh there were multiple radar locks, and again, 
the presumption is since they've been locking them up with fire control radars and potentially taking pot shots at them to see if they can shoot them down there, you know, this basically said that um, North Vietnam considered that area, this, that space that they were, they were flying way up there. And again, way farther less than the, than the actual, than the uh, demarcation for outer space, basically North Vietnam is saying, this is our sovereign airspace, you know, you're violating our sovereign airspace. So again, really there, there's precedent in the past for knocking out this idea that there, there is a legal gray zone in this quote, near space. <clears throat> the one everybody more was most familiar with is the SR-71 Blackbird. And that had 85,000 plus feet operating altitude. And it did a lot. I mean, and over, and it was in operation longer than the A-12 and it did a lot of missions. Soviet Union, um, Vietnam, uh, it overflew. It overflew Libya on multiple occasions, especially after the raid in in 1986, I believe it was. Um, they did multiple overflights there, and again, you know, they locked them up and took shots at them. And this this aircraft had multiple missiles shot at them uh, from a variety of countries. And again, operating at that altitude of near space, basically says that you know the whole idea is. This is our airspace, even though you're way, way, way up at that altitude, and we're going to defend it. So this whole idea of near space is really ridiculous. The idea that there's a legal ambiguity as to sovereignty is really ludicrous because past operations by these aircraft in particular have shown that, you know, basically these nations that were overflown or what considered a violation of, of their territorial airspace basically said, you know what, this is ours, stay out. So, I mean, why why is everybody why are they doing this? I think a lot of it has to do with with politics and narrative building, or <clears throat> just to create ambiguity where there really isn't uh, for this area, new space. And again, uh, you know, we I've talked about lawfare, and I think you know, in a sense, this is a lawfare operation in and of itself. Um, in particular, and and with this whole, and, and I think a lot of it is an oppor a political opportunity at this point. Especially with the, with this balloon, people saw an opportunity. Hey, let let, let you know. I have gotten the newspaper lately, or hey, we can stir up some trouble on this and start creating creating questions or problems where there isn't any. Now, apparently, next month at um, the meeting of the legal subcommittee at, for Copius at the UN, they're going to be talking about this again. I'm hoping the U.S. sticks to its guns on this and says, "Look, you know, we this this whole." near space thing is is ridiculous we, we claim sovereign airspace all the way up to outer space which doesn't have which the u.s doesn't recognize illegal demar demarcation but technically um you know once you get in orbit you're in space and i'm not going to get into that too much here that's another pet peeve of mine uh that i won't dive into on this video in particular but one one other consideration is that returning spacecraft uh when they when they when they come out of orbit or or such or but we return to the moon. Sometimes they actually fly through when they when they penetrate the atmosphere, they actually do come through the sovereign airspace in this quote near space altitude uh that 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 is being promulgated here. And under and it's become a state practice that basically this is you know an acceptable penetration of a foreign of a foreign power's airspace, a returning spacecraft. Um this has been and this is something that has been accepted and isn't considered a, a violation of, of their airspace in particular. So again, this whole near space thing, ridiculous. I mean, uh, I think it's a political a political thing. Bull feathers is, is, a, is, is a great way to describe it. And I, and I just really love, I, I just really love the term. It's very nice. Um, garbage is basically the way I look at it. This is the whole idea of near space is I think a, fab, a political fabrication or a narrative to create create some sort of international ambiguity. And again, you know, in, in the world we live in, you know, we're in my opinion this hybrid warfare environment we're living in. Something like this is pretty, you know, it, it, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. But again, this is a point where diplomats have to push back and say, "Look, we have all this precedent, all these." Missions we, you know, the U.S. performed with the U-2, with the A-12, with the SR-71, and and such that basically, um, this is, you know, this is this is ridiculous. The whole idea that you know there is a legal ambiguity there is ridiculous, and we're not going, we're we're not going to agree to it. We're not going to try. We're not going to assert it and let it become a customary norm of international law, so to speak. Um, 
again, ridiculous. Uh, and and really, I think it's uh, like I said before. I think it's an opportunity from this whole balloon fiasco uh, that that came up. Uh, was the U.S. justified in shooting it down? Absolutely. We, should, you know, it, it, in my opinion, it violated U.S. airspace, and it, and on, and my personal opinion, not notwithstanding, it probably should have been shot down a lot earlier than than it did once it originally um, penetrated. It, the U.S. airspace, and, on, on, and truthfully, the, in my opinion, the U.S. should be asserting that it was a violation of U.S. airspace. And I think if they had done that, it, some of this near space nonsense that's going on right now might have not really found a foothold to grow in. And again, I think it's, and I'm not going to get political here, um, but I think there was some poor decisions made uh, and continue to be made on on the messaging of this whole balloon thing, but. Now you've heard about my pet peeve on this near space thing. And again, it's related. It, it, even though I don't like to compare the earth to outer space, this idea of near space is really kind of, is really in so uh, congruent with the idea of a space law and space policy. Um, for example, I mean, you know, I talked about the no demarcation line. Well, you know, their, their, their technology is advancing, especially with this idea of, uh, of of point to point transportation where a spacecraft goes in 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 quote into space from one point to another as transportation. I think Elon Musk has talked about that a lot. In that case, you know, we made the whole idea of a demarcation might have to be re revisited uh, because of a plot, you know, deciding which laws apply, the laws of space or the law of air. But again, the whole near space thing, the whole it's rubbish, in my opinion, and it is you know the, as far as I'm concerned, the sovereignty of the U.S. extends all the way from the ground, past sixty thousand feet, all the way up into in, into where space begins, which, in my opinion, is one complete when, when an object makes one complete orbit of the Earth. So now that you've heard my little my little rant on that, I'll uh, let you get back to your Sunday or whatever day it, you're watching this video is, and hope you're staying safe and healthy. And I'll talk to you next time.